right, so we left off um, on part C. We should have had A and B done, um, those composite functions. So this one's actually kind of easier because they give you a number to plug in. So we want f of g of negative 1. And again, I always start inside, so I'm going to find out what g of negative 1 is. So we're going to look at g, we're going to plug in negative 1. 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 1. So negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So we've got 2 minus negative becomes plus 1 minus 1, we get 2. So g of negative 1 is 2. So really we want f of 2. Right? g of negative 1, we went to a g, plugged in negative 1, and we got 2. g of negative 1 is 2. So we really want f of 2. Um, so now that means go to f and plug in 2. Right? So we're going to go to f, 5 times 2 plus 6, we've got 10 plus 6, we have f of 2 is 16. All right, moving on. Now, last example. Wish I could have got that in in 15 minutes. Um, so here, f of g of x. So f of g of x. Again, start inside. So we want f of, and instead of g of x, I can write 1 over x. So what that means is you're going to go to f, and you're going to plug in 1 over x. So we're going to go to f, and instead of x, we're going to put 1 over x. Um, now there's a lot going on in this. We need to get a common denominator to go ahead and combine this denominator down here. So we're going to get 4. We have 1 over x. Um, common denominator would be x, so plus 2x over x, All right, which is 2. Um, I'm going to go this way now. 4 over here you have 1 plus 2x over x. And we're going to go ahead and keep, right, change flip. So keep 4 over 1, change to multiplication, and flip. So up top you got 4x. And the bottom, you have 1 times this, which is 1 plus 2x. And there would be your final um, composite, f of g of x. Log. Um, domain. Be careful about the domain. You have to worry about your g of x. So you know right now x can't equal 0. Because then you would have 1 over 0. You can't plug that in. Um, and you have to worry about your function. Um, so here you know 1 plus 2x um, cannot equal 0 either. So let's subtract 1. We know 2x cannot equal negative 1. And divide by 2, x cannot equal negative 1 half. So we've got two restrictions going on here. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and write it out. So we have negative infinity all the way up to negative one-half. Again, it cannot equal negative one-half. Now we're going to pick back up at negative one-half, and we're going to go all the way to zero, cannot equal zero. And we're going to pick up at zero and finish off to infinity. All right, that's the end of the notes. Bye, guys.